Yes, we've got some cool stuff for you today, but before we get into that, I'm going to show you a little bit more about our battery system and how we are going to double our charging capacity when hooked up to a backup power supply when we don't have enough sun. That's going to involve this bad boy right here. So that is next. So you see I've already got my cabinet opened up where the batteries are and the primary solar controllers and if you remember this is the cabinet here where we keep the inverter and the primary battery charger when we're charging from generator or shore power. The big blue device on the left that you see that's the inverter charger that you saw Sebastian install last week and the one on the right is the new charger that I just laid in there. Nothing is bolted down right now it's just sitting there so that I can make sure everything fits and you know line them up and see what I need to do. So far, it's looking like it's going to fit in perfectly and leave just enough room for ventilation at the top of the new charger and the back of the existing one that this whole cavity will have lots of room for the hot air to circulate. And then we're just going to need to put a little hole right up in here. So I'll show you all that in a second. But if I take you inside the cabinet, you'll see here is our inverter on the left and there is all our primary wiring. So that is our AC input right there. And these are our AC outputs. This is our battery positive and negative terminals right there. There's only one AC input here that you can see and it's not heavy enough to actually run two wires to run a piggyback wire over to the new charger. So I've disconnected that wire and run it over here to where I've run a terminal block instead. So this bridge terminal is where I've got the hot wire on top, the neutral on the bottom, and then the grounds just all tied right here. But that is now run from, this is the ship's cable right here going in. And I've got these two yellow pieces of cable coming off the terminal block that are actually pieces of a shore power cable that I haven't used in years. So we sacrificed it because it is definitely for marine purposes, handle all environments and very, very heavy duty cable. So it's definitely gonna be overkill for this little job. Okay, so we'll take this back out so we can work on it and get started to get it ready for our wiring. Now you can see I've already removed the protective cover and inside you'll see it's very simple hookups. That's our AC inlet right there. So this is the restraint relief for the wire. And then we've got actually three terminals for different battery banks. If you're running more than one battery bank, you can hook them all up individually, but we're only running for one. So we're just gonna have the DC negative and DC positive one. So we're just going to use these two terminals right here and hook those directly into our 24 volt terminals right there. New neighbor this morning, guys. I don't know where you're from, but speaking English, and now they start to anchor. Where well, is this the car anchor? Then it's the same spot. Nice boat. Yes, obviously our next thing is for ventilation of the cabinet because now we've got two big heat sources in the back so as you can see so as you can see Sebastian is putting in a new vent here and that will house this guy and this is just to allow the heat to escape the front of the cabinet but to push the air through we're going to install this and another hole very similar 
on the inside panel where you know the equipment is right in there. So just up in that top piece right there, we're going to put another hole for this. Just like we did in the battery compartment, you remember, we'll put it on a, uh, on a temperature sensor as well so that it will only come on when the chargers are on and when the heat up there rises to, say, 100 degrees. So this will turn on, it will start pumping air from above the chargers out into this cavity, and then it will have this for the air to escape out. So I'm just going to draw it out of there, push it into here, and then push it out here, and that will take it straight out and straight out the companionway so we won't have any heat in the cabin. Muy bien. <laughs> so while we continue our project, let's join Maddie over at her second day of diving for her Patty certification. In the darkness, without a glimpse of the light, running tired and broken and scared, but I swear I'll never give up the fight. I see you broken and beat, head pulled down over your eyes. Party wants to surrender, darling. You were meant to survive with every star. We are born again. Open your heart, spend this time in your head. Good job, Danielson. <laughs> Thank you, Sensei. <laughs> Attack. Okay, let me try with this one. Make a few marks. The pencil. Okay, next step complete. As you can see, got my AC wiring all secured and hooked up. So we've got our one feed into the inverter charger, which is in behind here right now. And the other one comes down and goes into the Centaur charger. So that's already hooked up. 
We got our positive and our negative run down to the battery terminals. I'll show you those in a second also. But we are ready to put it into position. So that's next. And there we go. It's in position. Fits in perfectly. The wires are coming down through the groove right there. We got a little extra cable there and that's just so that when we need to pull it out, we actually have room to pull it out of the cabinet and work on it and still give us access to the inverter behind. And inside our battery compartment, this is where you can see where we've got the wires run for the new charger and they come directly to the 24 volt bus. And that's what these two terminals are here. So we've got the positive side bus and the negative bus over there. They've got protective covers on them and this is where all the heavy gauge wire comes straight into to, for all the major loads and charging sources. So this is the wiring that we just ran in that's connecting to the new charger. So we've already got the 24 volt system isolated on its own bus and now everything for the 12 volt system just run from this battery. So unfortunately I don't have any more terminal buses. So for now we just had to wire everything directly to the terminals, but I've got a bunch of new parts on order that are gonna help us isolate everything for the 12 volt system as well. So we will have a separate set of red and black buses that'll be just for the 12 volt system and one for the 24. And we'll just put little labels on the front of each one accordingly. So it's not confusing to anybody who's actually trying to look at my system. So that will be in the very near future. We're expecting those parts, hopefully in a couple of weeks, and then we'll be able to install them all. And we've also got our temperature sensor hooked up. So it's just sitting up here right now. I'm actually going to have it mounted with this one. I'm gonna take them out of the cabinets and put them up here with our main control panel when we, when we install the whole new panel. They'll probably be just under the mirror here somewhere. And we'll have the two temperature sensors and one of the battery monitors for the 12 volt system. So that would be very cool, but we've already got this hooked up and running and the fan is working perfect. So we set it, right now it's set for 95 degrees, just as a test, and then uh, we'll set it up for 100 again once we put everything into full service. Okay, so everything is installed, hooked up, ready to go, and now it's time for our first test. So, out to the generator. You can see what's happening here. We're getting 3.6 kilowatts of charge. 1500 of it's coming from the generator on shore power. The rest is coming from the battery charger, which is 1400 watts. Okay, I call that mission complete. We got a success. So we are getting 3.6 kilowatts of charging now. That's amazing. So very happy about that. That's translating to roughly 120 to 130 amps at 24 volts DC which are equivalent in 12 volts DC would have been 240 to 260 amps. That's a substantial amount of charging. So very happy with that. Muy bien. Some of you might remember last week when we had a new boat arrive with four guys on board. It's a 40 foot race boat owned by our now friend Luis, or Lucho as he goes by. Interestingly enough, Lucho is from the Galapagos Islands in the Pacific. He found the boat in the United States, so he flew up there to buy it and sail it back to Galapagos where he has a sailing school for kids with disabilities. Cool. 
Well, along his way south, he ran into some weather and ended up losing his engine, batteries, and of course all electrics. He stopped here in San Andres just long enough to get everything fixed, which it sounds like he's accomplished. So tonight, he's planning on getting underway. Meantime, Lucho invited us to come and have a look. So, let's go have a look. How are we doing? Now remember, this is a racing boat, <laughs> not a cruising boat. <laughs> All right, what do we got? Cool it only for water. What's this, air conditioner? Yeah, it's now for fans. <laughs> but I can't use it for air conditioning. But you're plugged into shore power. Yeah. And that's your fridge. But this is one of the bunks here? Yeah, you know, it's for condition red. So, oh, these are the bunks the guys sleep in. Yeah, one, two, to have it for six. Two so behind. Back there? One, two, three. Yeah. One, two, three. Okay, so everybody's towards the back of the boat, but right now it's all full of gear. Yeah. It's full. <laughs> it's full. You can see the fishing pool? Yeah. 17 fishing pools. 17 fishing pools. Uh, you're gonna have to take some fishing lessons from you. What? <laughs> you're gonna have to take some fishing lessons from you. Ooh, yeah. You must catch some good fish out there. Tomorrow, you can, and even tomorrow, you need the food you have for tomorrow. And this is all storage. The blue pack is food, food. That's the old generator there, it's not working? Yeah. 11 cell. A couple anchors. So you got 11 sails, that we said? Yeah. Here I have my bed. Uh huh. That's where you Not camp out? Very comfort. It's your charts. <laughs> Not very comfort? Yeah. <laughs> you can see. Your captain is never wrong. <laughs> Sloppy, crude, fickle, but never wrong. <laughs> Good one. Yeah. Yeah, this is a crazy boat. So she very tender though, she heel over a lot? What? Like when you're sailing on the wind, she lean over a lot? No, you get out. I'm just wondering, nothing is tied down, no, so no, does... No, 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 it's impossible. Does, what? Does it all fall? Yeah, everything falls. <laughs> one time, the, the roof here is, is here. Yeah. Same with this. Uh -huh. Big wave. Pass out the boat, everything. <laughs> this part, you stay here, uh, fail there. Uh -huh. the, air, the air condition, everything is good. The bed, all, all you have here is casting. All everywhere. Upside, yeah. Everything, everything. No. What about all this water? <laughs> yeah. Why? Sometimes you can see the wire from here. Up here. But you got all this water now, it's not going to get stored no. somewhere? It's usually what you have now. It's one day, two days. That's for two days. Yeah, hit by the month. So what do you keep you on? You have the... more there, you have more there. You have tanks? No. No water tanks. Yeah, the fuel tank is six gallons. Six gallons? Yeah, fuel tank is is smaller, six gallons. You ain't motoring across the Pacific. No. <laughs> I have thirty gallons a bar in the parker. Yeah. You did it. In yeah. small bottles. Yeah. But how are you, where are you going to put enough water then for the trip to Galapagos? Uh, you just uh, fill it, the boat with anywhere? Water from, down here, is everything's water, water, uh, anywhere. Anywhere you can. Yeah, water, well, uh, half full space for water. But I, 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 I buy this boat in the United States. When I go to the United States to Cancun, yeah. I have 22 packs of water. Yeah, it's, a, it, it's anywhere. Water is more important. Mm -hmm. No water to die, bro. Yeah, you can always catch food at sea. Yeah. You have a lemon for ceviche, uh, pineapple, apple, uh, I mean by bananas later, uh, meal, cornflakes. <laughs> yeah, this is it. It's food for two days. Two days. A apart, you, have, you see there? The blue pocket yeah. is full food. Of food. food. Yeah. Okay. Pasta, frijoles, everything. The tuna. How do you? There. Where do you cook on? More pocket. More food. More food. Uh, down here, more food. 
But do you have a place to cook? Uh, I play, first I need a generator because all cooking in the electronic kitchen. Okay, electric it, stove. It's, yeah, electric stove. It's, it's not, I don't wanna, I don't wanna put paint and stuff here. Right, right, right. It, it's difficult for cooking. I wanna make one here, but in the United States, $3,000, $2,000. For what? For, for the kitchen. The stove? Yeah, for the stove. Yeah, they said, I don't wanna, they said here, no. Electronic, open the sale, go slow, mm -hmm. cooking, terminal, go. In Galapagos, you don't need this. In Galapagos, you can provide more time. Is sailing around the island, camping in the in the beach. Yeah. Yeah, parking. Yeah, no. But it's not so time sleeping here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have my house it's close to the sea. <laughs> you can park in my boat from the house. Leave. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, that's cool, man. Yeah, it's is it the racing champion. I win Alabama. Fishing win, champion too. Yeah, fishing class. Cool. And I win two times, <laughs> two fish. This is the the, the trophy for the win two times first. Uh-huh. And in the, uh, one day, two first place. Nice. This is the trophy. What is it, rum? Yes. Banana spiced rum. From where? Uh, this is from New Orleans. New Orleans? Yeah. Oh, okay. How long are you in the States after you bought it? <sighs> Two months in United States. You bought it on the East Coast. I bought this in uh, uh, Mandeville. Where? Mandeville, New Orleans. Oh, in New Orleans. Yeah, Mandeville, from, from New Orleans. Okay, so yeah, I you were already in the Gulf of Mexico, basically. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is your electrical panel down here that you're having? That's the one giving problems? Uh, no, I uh, have a solution right now. It's okay? Yeah, this is okay. Is it more for revolution? Uh-huh. Lux GSA. Revolution is 12. Uh-huh. Now it's 7, 8. If for this, it's hot. So that's the main engine, but you only have a six-gallon fuel tank. Yes. The engine so is enough here. to get you in and out of the harbor, that's about it. Yeah, the engine is here, compared with here. What's under there? Propeller. Oh, propeller up yeah. there. No, it's behind, it's here. <laughs> it's how'd, go front. how'd they do that? You wanna see? It's on an elbow. Yeah. Strange. Oh, wow. So that's the shaft. It comes from the engine, which is aft. Look, the propeller is here. It's behind the hill. Yeah, so it comes forward here. It's all hydraulic. Yeah. It's always coming from the engine in here. The propeller is here. Okay. So that's just a drive. Yeah. Connected to the shaft, connected to the propeller. Yeah. And the hydraulics come from the engine. Yeah. So it's just a big engine driving a big electric or a big uh, hydraulic pump. Yeah. It's coming from here. Cool. Right. So how, how long have you had the boat now? Huh? How long have you owned the boat? Here. No, you bought it when? Six months ago? Three months? No, three. Three months ago. Yeah. I live with the boat for three months now. Okay. Yeah. And you're almost home. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah. You can put it on here. Bites the dust. Yeah. Lucho gone. Yeah, we did part of Sebastian and Hugo and 
Oh, we got his big crew at least. As they say, another one bites the dust. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, we got two new neighbors that have come in this week, but that's our other friend Lucho that just left and uh, he's on his way back to Galapagos. So, he was a good friend to make, nice connection, nice person. Thank you so much for the invitation to come to Galapagos and everything, Lucho. And, okay. uh, we hope to see you there. That might become part of our game plan. You just never know. Stranger things have happened. I was debating if we were going to get to Galapagos or not, but now, you know, having friends there could make all the difference in the world. So that could be very, very cool. So anyway, nice to meet you, mate. We'll see you on the other side in the Pacific. Safe travels and... And a good wind. And a good wind. See.